Hey there, AP Pre-Calc students. It's Miss Adams from Flamingo Math. We're looking at lesson 2.8, the first day, talking about inverse functions. You know that a relation is a set of ordered pairs, and a function is a special relation where for every distinct x value we have, there's exactly one corresponding y value. In other words, if a function f has the ordered pairs x and y, then the inverse function of f will have this ordered pairs y and then x. When the inverse of a function is itself a function, then f is said to be invertible. Let's first start looking at the mappings in example one. We want to justify each mapping with an observation. In the first mapping, 1 maps to 4, 2 maps to 5, and 3 maps to 6. In AP Pre-Calc, we want to use the language where we say each input in the domain has only one unique output. In the second one, it's not an invertible function. And if we use the input and output language for our course, we could say that the output values do not map to a unique input value. So in this example, even though the relation 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 6, even though this is, an, is a function, the inverse would only be a relation. The inverse would not be a function. And then in our third example, this relation is not a function at all, and we can say that each input value does not map to only one output value, each input. does not map to only one output value. And on the AP exam, you would want to give an example and state that one maps to four and one maps to five. So even though in Algebra 2 we talked about horizontal line test and vertical line test, we leave that language behind for AP Pre-Calc. Moving on to the properties of inverse functions, let's look at the next example. Graphs of inverse functions are reflections across the line y equals f. And if we're given a function f of x, the notation for the inverse function is going to be f inverse of x. So you don't want to read that as negative 1 or an exponent. The notation is f inverse of x with that superscript of negative 1 being read as f inverse of x. The domain of a function is equal to the range of the inverse because we said if a function had a point 1, 3, then its inverse function would have the ordered pair 3, 1. So the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. And the range of the function is equal to the domain of the inverse. So they trade places when we're talking about inverse root functions. In example two, we're going to sketch the inverse, but first we want to draw the line y equals x. That line is called the identity, and it's the line that everything is reflected about when we're graphing inverse functions. So this is the line y equals x, and switching over to green, if the ordered pair negative 3, negative 2 is on the graph, then we have the ordered pair negative 2, negative 3 on our inverse. Here you have 1, 0 on our function, so 0, 1 is on our inverse. 
and here it looks like 6, 1 is on our function, so 1, 6 would be on our inverse. And that graph would pass through the line y equals x, and we would have our inverse function. So this is f inverse of x in green, and in black this is my f of x, and then the identity line y equals x. So we could say something along the line that f of x is invertible, because every element, by that I mean an x and y coordinate, every element of the range of f of x maps to a unique element of the domain. So we're just being a little more specific in our language for AP Pre-Calc than we would in our Algebra 2 course of its domain. And then for Part B, f of x is our graph that's in black. It's a parabola. And y equals x is going to be at 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. 5, 5, 6, 6, so it's going across here, the diagonal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so we're going quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, so this is y equals x line, and when we turn the parabola sideways, we do not have an inverse, so we are looking at 0, negative 2, and then say one, 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 two, three. And then one, and then. So we've got a parabola going sideways this way. This is f inverse of x. It is not a function. And we want to say something along the lines to justify that. f of x is not invertible. Because elements of the range of f of x map to different elements of its domain. And I'm going to use two specific examples. Let's say negative 3. It looks like 1, 2, 3, negative 3. What is that? Negative 3, 6 or 7. Must be 7. Negative 3, 7. And positive 3 positive 3, 7, so both elements of the range. So the f of negative 3 and the f of positive 3 both have a range of 7. On this slide, this is our formal definition for inverse functions. If f of g of x and g of f of x are equal to x, then we can say that g is the inverse of the function f. We want to show that's true in example 3. We're going to prove that the f of g of x, the f of g of x is 4x plus 3. That's our f function. We're substituting x minus 3 divided by 4 for our g function. 4 divides 4, we end up with x minus 3 plus 3. So x minus 3 plus 3 gives us just x. So f of g of x 
is equal to x, the identity. But you can't make the assumption it works the other way. You need to show that the g of f of x, so g of x is x minus 3 divided by 4. We're substituting f inside the variable x. Then 4x plus 3 minus 3, this is 0, gives us 4x divided by x. So g of f of x is also equal to x. If they're both equal to x, then we can say, therefore, f of g of x and g of f of x both yield x. So they're inverses of each other. This one helps us see how the x and y coordinates are flipped over. In the first table, g of x is given, the table for g of x, and we want the x values for the inverse. So the range of g becomes the domain of the inverse, and the domain of g becomes the range of the inverse. For example, 5, the table for y equal to h of x, and we want to determine if h has an inverse function, and if it does, give a reason for our answer. So what do we know about this function? We're looking for output values. Are they all mapped to unique and I see a problem here. So the g of negative 3, let's get our highlighter out. The g of negative 3 is 4. That's not a highlighter. <laughs> highlighter. The g of negative 3 is 4. The g of 1 is 4. The g of negative 2 is 3. And the g of 0 is 3. So there's a problem there. We could say something along the line of h of x. So we could say h of x does not have an inverse function. And our reason is there are output values of the function h that are not mapped. Whoop, hold on a minute. That are not mapped from unique input values. And we're going to give some examples. For x, the g of negative 3 is equal to the g of 1. They both have a y value of 4. And the g of negative, oh, it's not the g, it's the h of x, isn't it? Naming my function wrong. The h, the h of negative 3 and the h of 1 are both 4. And the h of negative 2 and the h of 0 are both 3. So we do not have an inverse that's also a function. And this is our last example today. If f and g are defined by the tables, use the tables to evaluate the following. We want the f inverse of 4. So the f inverse of 4, of negative 4, is where the y value is negative 4. So wherever x, what's the x value that gives us negative 4 for the y? That's 5. So the f inverse of negative 4 is going to be the x coordinate from the function where the y coordinate is negative 4. So this negative 4 
is x on the inverse, but it's y on the function. So the domain of the function is the range of the inverse, which is 5. Got how that goes? So here the g inverse of 6 is the y value on the g graph. That's here, so the x coordinate is the range for the inverse. On part C, f inverse of the g of 1. So now we need to know the g of 1. The g of 1 is negative 3. So we want the f inverse of negative 3. The y value on f is negative 3 at the coordinate 3. So the f inverse of negative 3 is going to be the x-coordinate where y was negative 3, x was 3. So this is the output on the inverse. And then our very last one, the g inverse of the f of 0. So the f of 0 is negative 1. We want the y value where y is negative 1 on g our x-coordinate, g inverse of negative 1, is going to be 4. Oh, does that hurt your head? That's day one. Inverse functions. See you tomorrow for the next part.